channel called She's So Raven, and you definitely have to check her out, but she does, like, these true life bizarre fact videos, and I wondered if you guys would be interested in videos like that here on the channel.
him, which just don't make any sense. First, he is spotted by a friend from church, and he is frantically rushing through the Southwest Airlines terminal. But he has no luggage with him. On Sunday, his red Ford Explorer was seen parked outside of the Potter County Courthouse, and a deputy sheriff witnessed a man matching David's description with the vehicle. Now, David did return home at some point because neighbors remember seeing his car parked in the driveway on Sunday. However, when his wife, Karen, and daughter Lauren get home on Sunday, he's not there. They find his wedding ring and his watch on the counter. There was a load of laundry in the dryer. A couple of counts that I read said the dryer was on, but I can't confirm that. Now the lights around the house were on. The TV was on and the VCR was still recording the football game. There were also two turkey sandwiches in the refrigerator, presumably prepared by David. Now, this is 1993, so he had to hit record on the VCR. It, it wasn't, you couldn't set it up via timer in 1993. That's not. So, the only thing noticeably absent from the house is David. Karen assumed that maybe he'd gone to watch the game at a friend's house or something like that, and that he'd be back soon. However, he didn't come home overnight, and she learned that he had missed two appointments, which, that's very out of character for him, she said. She gets worried, and she calls the police to tell them that he's missing. I'm sorry my stomach is being so disrespectful. It wasn't doing this before I started filming, of course. So... Early on in the investigation, the police learned that someone using his name purchased two plane tickets before he went missing. The first ticket was bought January 31st, and it was from Dallas to Amarillo, Texas. Now, he wasn't in Dallas. His wife and daughter were in Dallas, remember? The second ticket was purchased the next day, and this would take him from Los Angeles to Dallas. So, none of these are where he is located. They're, they're not for him to fly from home to somewhere else, which is completely bizarre to me. No one could explain what could have compelled David to purchase these tickets, and since airports at the time did not require people to show their IDs, before boarding a plane in 1993, can you imagine? It couldn't be verified that he was really the person who purchased these tickets. I couldn't actually find out if he used them, or someone used them. Another unexplained detail that came out during this investigation is that someone had deposited, not withdrawn, like we hear usually, into the Lewis's family bank account on January 30th. Unfortunately, though, it couldn't be determined who made the deposit. And I don't know why. Was it like a check? Was it cash? Was why, How come we couldn't determine who made this deposit? David's Ford Explorer was soon discovered parked by the courthouse. His keys were found under the floor mat, and his driver's license, credit card, and checkbook were all in the car as well, which was apparently pretty normal for him to leave them in the car. But why were the keys under the floor mat? Karen believed that the only item that was missing from their 
said that he was looking forward to several future events that included their daughter's upcoming birthday, and he would have wanted to be there. David's friends echoed the same sentiment. They said that he was talking about future career possibilities, and he seemed content with his life in general. He was also still actively involved in the community and the organizations. However, it's possible that he was going through something that he just didn't share with the people around him. At the time that he went missing, David was a defendant in a conflict of interest case that had been brought against him and several other attorneys, as well as a former client. David was the last person that needed to be deposed before he vanished. All of his paperwork relating to this case disappeared along with him, and it has never been found. It's unclear if it's relevant to the case, but kind of weird to me. Karen refused to take a polygraph test, and this caused some contention between herself and the investigators. And I don't, I don't understand why she refused to take it, just take it and pass it, but whatever. Ultimately, authorities believe that David had left Amarillo of his own free will. They couldn't find any evidence of foul play, and they closed his case in 2000. later. Now, stick with me. Stick with me, okay? On the night of February 1st, 1993, so like a day-ish after David goes missing, motorists witness a man walking down the middle of State Route 24 in Moxie, Washington. This is east of Yakima, Yakima. This man is wearing military fatigues and boots. He had no other luggage, suitcase, nothing, backpack with him. He's walking down the middle of the road, so a concerned motorist turns around and attempts to warn this man, or, I'm sorry, warn other motorists that someone is walking in the road. However, they were too late help this man because by the time they get back to him, which, how far did you go? But he's lying. 
tricks me when I start thinking too hard about it. Uh, the only thing I can say is that the death threats maybe freaked him out and he ran, but he had had several death threats before. It wasn't as though it was a new situation, not to say that that's fun, having experienced them myself from this very channel. It's scary, even if you know that the person is not going to do what they claim they say they're going to do, it's still scary. But I don't, I just, I don't know, I feel like he had, like, his ish together, you know? He, he wasn't, he, he was looking forward to the future, he was planning all these things and doing all these things, and he had this great life. He and Karen weren't fighting that we know about. Uh, he genuinely loved his daughter, fr family, friends, work. Why would he just peace? That doesn't make any sense to me. Um, if it was a fugue state, uh, having dealt with dementia myself, I could see how that um, would make things so strange. 